The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the June 17th, the magical Monday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. How about we have an extraordinary day? The easy way to have an extraordinary day is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what the bulls and the bears, what the buyers and the sellers are communicating to you and I just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, but more importantly, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up this phone, any phone. Your phone, 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, well, let those fingers do the walking. That's right. Send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, in our Tiger's Den, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get started. Take a look at these markets. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, the Dow up 54 points, trading at 26.143. S&P up six. NASDAQ 100 up three quarters of a percent, 55 points. Russell's up nearly one full percentage point, uh, trading out at uh, 15.36, up nearly 14 points. Semis are flat. Um, New York Stock Exchange, Wilshire, uh, they're up. Uh, the transports are off 63 bucks, so a little bit of a mixed market out here. The VIX. Volatility index, spot volatility index, trading out at 1548. I believe that's still below its 50-day exponential moving average. Gold is basically flat, silver as well. Light sweet crude off 22 pennies, leading the charge to the upside. You've got Array Biopharma. I think that's a buyout. Yeah, both that, Sotheby's. So Amazon is up 14 bucks. Beyond Meat up 18. Netflix up 11 to the downside of the line. Technologies, about 1.6 million shares off nearly 6% or 17 bucks. Echo Labs up about $7.60. Uh, Sanderson's Farm down over 5% or 7 bucks. So plenty to look at. Of course, we want to look at what you want to look at. So let's go take a look at the general markets, get a feel for what's going on. Good to be back with you. Uh, let's go take a look at the uh, at the at three of the equity futures contracts out here. Let's begin by taking a look at the ES Mini. What you are if you're watching us on Tiger TV, then you're going to see some red, green, and blue horizontal lines out there. Uh, the blue represent the daily, the green, the weekly, and the red monthly. What they represent for those time frames are the horizontal trading ranges. Horizontal trading ranges are produced by taking a look at a bunch of data as much as you can fit on the screen. In my case here, I think I go back into the 1990s. Um, and so it's got quite a bit of data. Uh, it's looking at the at the closing price, right? The, the body of a candle, you and I, well, I use candlestick charting. Uh, when you take a look at a candlestick, you've got a body. That's the open and the close. When you take a look at a red bodied candle, it tells you where the open was higher than where the close was. A green body candle, the close was higher than where the open was. Simple as that. Neither bullish nor bearish. Just uh, green means it uh, closed above the open, red closed below the open. Then you've got the extreme emotions for the time frame that you're dealing with. This is a daily time frame that I'm showing with those three different horizontal trading range levels out there. But each of the horizontal trading ranges for their different time frames are using the opens and closes 
of a candle for that time frame out there. Then what I'm doing is I've uh, got a computerized system. It goes out there. It figures out where the largest concentration of opens or closes is for that time frame, figures out where that second level is. And then from there, we just simply take that price difference and add it to the top and bottom for those different time frames. A month is going to end typically on a uh, different day than, let's say, the week. Not always, but, you know, if you, you obviously a daily chart uh, is going to end on a Friday and a weekly on a Friday and a monthly that ends on a Friday. Well, then, it, but, but it doesn't always work that way. That's why we have different numbers out here. Now that we've gone through what in the Sam heck this is, uh, here's what we know. We know that at the 2906 level, we've seen 39 opens or closes on a daily time frame. Fairly significant. The uh, next level that's more significant uh, on here would be 2728. That's where the S&P 500, the S-mini, really what I should say, found a bottom back here on June the 3rd. Uh, prices run up to its daily horse. So there's a daily and a monthly sitting right there. So this 2906 level is the area to really be watching. If the ES Mini closes above 2906, well, then it is very likely on to its next level. The next level would be the 2957 area. Now, I won't go through the full explanation when we take a look at the Dow Equity Futures contract, but what you will notice here is there have been 56, five, six opens or closes on a daily basis in the 26191 area we're trading at 26160 this is a real significant resistance level now support hasn't broken if we just simply take a look at the horizontal trading ranges so what you have is it's trying to crack the ice and if we see a close above 26192 you do not want to be short the dow because that suggests that price will run to 26,553. I'd say you get above 26,191. We're probably more likely, or it's more likely, Dow Equity Futures contract headed to 26,824. But here's the deal. It's up against daily and weekly resistance. Whether or not it's going to close above that level or not, I don't know. I wish I knew. wish I had that answer. We can go take a look at some tools that will give us suggestions as what the market is tipping its hat uh, or communicating to you and I. And if we take a look at the NQ here during the next minute, you're not going to see the daily. I've turned the daily off. You just have the weekly and the monthly horizontal trading range. The reason I turned it off is because it was the, even though it's a daily time frame chart, it was the weekly and monthly that were providing us with the best information. Right now we can see prices in between uh, two weekly profile levels. And that suggests to me that what price is trying to do is get up to the 7622 area. Above that would be 7714. If we take a look at the profile levels out here, the beauty about the Dow and the reason why it should be able to take out that resistance level is because it's above the top of a daily profile. This is a daily profile that formed last week. That level was 26,121. You're at 26,159. You close above 26,121. Suggest the market moves to higher price. The um, ES Mini, the NQ, the Russell 2000, well, the Russell 2000 uh, is trading above the top of its profile, daily profile, 1529. So that's bullish. Uh, so in essence here, uh, we've got all of the equity futures contracts trading above daily profiles, resistance levels. Now, I don't know where things end the day, but it looks uh, looks pretty good to Stevie Son. Hey, speaking of looking pretty good, we talked about that uh, spot volatility index. Right now, trading out at 1550. Uh, 1587 is the 50 day exponential moving average. Sounds like enough liquidity to push markets higher. We'll be right The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. 
The TAS Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of TAS Market Profile, the TAS Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien have just announced a special webinar on June 19th for all subscribers to the TAS Profile Scanner. Steve and Tom will break down the trade matrix, market breadth, heat grid, as well as the three-step process you can use with the TAS Profile Scanner to identify market movers and how to capitalize on that move. For all the details and to get started with the TAS Profile Scanner today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. With a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. Go sign up today. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So, Ruby the Tigers then wants to take a look at the uh, Great British Pound uh, futures. So, let's go take a look at the uh, market profiles here for Ruby. And, uh, Ruby, here's the 30-minute. Uh, let's change that to a 60-minute time frame just for the heck of it. So, we got a 60-minute on the left-hand side, 120, 300. That's the five-hour time frame. And then the uh, daily. Um, what we can see is all of the bars are red for each of the time frames. So price is trading below all of the bottoms of those boxes out there. And that suggests uh, lower prices out here. What I don't have here, Ruby, and I'll do this... Um, I'll do this tomorrow for you. I can't do it live during the show because I have so many tools that are open up, which is add the uh, current uh, September contract symbol. And then so hit me up tomorrow and we'll see if there's any kind of bottoming signal or pattern uh, that is out here. But um, and, I, and it's possible that price is moving lower, doing less relative energy. Uh, you don't have any type of bullish reversal signal. So even if that's what it's showing me, there's nothing for you to trade upon uh, today. Um, you know, I'd switch the 60-minute uh, to 30-minute uh, for you. We'll come back to the 30-minute profile. I believe price is also uh, down below the bottom of that box. It is. This is a brand-new profile that formed a half an hour ago. So I don't see a bottom here just yet, but I would really need to go to my other bottoming tools to make that determination uh, for us. Uh, is there a larger A to B equals CD to the downside? Let me just put up the continuous contract. Um, and take a quick peek out here, see what we've got. Um, and, and certainly there there is. Uh, we can take a look at the last bottom that formed out here. It looks like that's with the A to B equals CD pattern that had completed. And that was your 1 to 1 1.272 because you did have a bullish reversal candle out here on May 31st, Ruby. So what we know is that, uh, and that was an A to B equals CD pattern 
you know, to call it a Gartley buy would be stretching it. Uh, let me see how much of a stretch. If we get to the point, if we if it's just hovering around the re, the retracement was around the point seven eight six. Yeah, it's below that. Was below that. So more more the signs of a potential consolidation than anything else. But here's what we know: every A to B equals CD pattern out there, Ruby. And so we know the A to B equals CD pattern that was present. You should at least get a dead cat bounce. The dead cat bounce would take you, in essence, up to the 0.382 level. Now, remember, I'm using a continuous contract, so you'd want to do this on the contract that you're trading. But we can see that price never even made it even close uh, after that uh, bullish reversal signal on May 31st out there, telling us just simply how weak it is. Um, so, you know, back to the uh, back to the uh, September uh, futures contract here. Um, until I get the other tools out there. We're not seeing any kind of a uh, bottom signal as we speak uh, just yet. And again, even on the daily basis, we you and I would need some type of bullish reversal candle in order to suggest that, uh, okay, another attempt at the A to B equals CD would be uh, just uh, fine. So I hope that helps you out. And uh, thanks for uh, writing in inside our Tiger's Den. We've got a question here coming in from uh, HD. That's the high definition listener out here. And uh, HD says, hey, Steve, hey, HD, would you please look at RIG? Let's go take a look at uh, RIG as a ticker symbol, TransOcean. And uh, wondering if it's a possible long here. So excellent question. Now, here we always like to start off by taking a look at our market profile. So as we take a look at those, we're gonna see, just like in the Great British Pound, but here I can go ahead and show you the other charts out there, whereas for Ruby, I couldn't do that during the show because it just, it's just unfortunately too much processing time. But I would say this, HD, it's gonna be dependent upon the close. You can see that today's candle session in the lower left from a daily standpoint is a, a bullish engulfing right now. Now, just because the bullish engulfing form doesn't mean that that's the bottom. However, my eyes were on the other side of the chart or the other tool that I haven't put up there yet. That's this one. That's why that is important, because what we can see out here, as long as price inside rig today closes below, that's right, below the price point of 590, near 560 right now, then what you're going to have is a TD setup nine count. Uh, Friday was count number eight. Today will be count number nine. And you can see that price is trading right now just above Stevie's red line. Um, let me give you what that exact number is for you, what that red line number is. It is, uh, well, let me see here. Maybe I have to come down here. There we go. Uh, that red line is, no, nah, that's not right. What the heck? What the heck? It's 559, and we're trading at 561. So a close of a 559, I can see taking a trade inside of a rig with regard to that TD setup nine count, with regard to where price white might bounce to. Uh, look, you've got the bottom of the box at 654 on the daily, 665 on the weekly. So those would become target prices. You certainly had a gap to the downside. Remember, gaps are your friends because of information they provide. So there is certainly some resistance at uh, 584 uh, to 588 out there. That's where your gap is at. So, uh, but but if you're asking me, is there a bottoming signal inside of uh, ticker symbol RIG? The answer is there is as of 124 in the afternoon. At 4 o'clock, you'd like to see price close above Stevie's red line. I believe that was 559. We're trading at 560, so it's pretty tough to make that call. You can see how Stevie's red line has acted as resistance for quite some period of time. So I'd like the market, I'd like rig itself to prove that to you, HD, before you step in on that trade. Now, look, I do not have any kind of bottoming signal on a weekly time frame out here or necessarily a monthly time frame so um but there's your early warning doppler signal brought to you by the good folks here at tiger financial news network and this is steve Rhodes. all right so no more questions so please send in those cards and letters uh steve at tfn.com just put radio show question if you can inside the tiger's den would love to hear from you as well in the meantime uh, let's go take a look at what do we want to take a look at out here. Um, oh, 
I know what I can do. So we took a look at the resistance levels inside the daily time frame for the equity futures contracts. If you want to really get a feel for what the market is doing shorter term, so to speak, just take a look at the 120 minute charts for the equity futures contract. Now, what you're going to notice out here, what Stevie's going to point out to you, is the red horizontal line and the green horizontal line, each being set up, green being resistance, red being support, each being set up from a 120 minute time frame in the ES mini by its uh, TD setup nine counts out there. So, resistance, as we speak right now, is 2905.50. If you get it close above that, price will have broken and taken out a resistance level. That's right. I'm not looking at the 5905 level. Well, no, 5905. What the heck am I talking about there? The 2911 area, 2911.50 to be exact out here with regard to the uh, September contract for the ES Mini. It's more going to be the other level, that green line out here. And not until price closes below support, that number would be 2871, would there be some kind of message? Uh, uh, but, but there's your trading range inside the ES Mini. You've got the same type of trading range on the 120 minute time frame inside the NQ. Take a look at it. Uh, the level that it now needs to be able to take out, that's priced at 76.13. We get back to this break. I'll give you what the Russell 2000 is doing on the two hour time frame. Oh, great. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
All right, folks, sorry about that. A uh, little technical difficulty, but uh, Mr. Bill, I should be back alive and kicking. And uh, we wanted to take a look at the Russell 2000 equity futures contract. Right now, the Russell is up 13 points, straight out at 15. 36 and uh, but let's go take a look at Russell 2000 equity futures contract. It's a two hour time frame. That's really providing the uh, most significant uh, the most significant uh, levels for us to be watching. And uh, here we can see. So so when the Russell 2000 equity futures contract from a two hour time frame topped, it actually formed with a TD setup nine count. This is at 2200 hours back on June the 13th. Now the low of that entire count set that support level and that was down here at that price point of 1527 now price broke through that this was at about two o'clock um last week on friday and uh, then it was count number eight that actually made that low that was at five o'clock and so what we can see here is there was a nine count bottom that had formed now that nine count bottom set up the resistance level that resistance level uh, is set up right here that was june 14th that took place at four o'clock in the morning and that price point was 1541.90 154190 is the level to be watching. The actual high that we've seen during this past two hours has been 1541. So price is right now traded up into resistance. It doesn't tell me whether price is going to break through resistance or not, but on a two-hour time frame, uh, if we're looking for signals from the market, the first signal could come from the Russell 2000. So continue to pay attention to that throughout the uh, trading session. All we know as we speak right now is that price has hit resistance. Um, was there another question? Was there a question out there? No, I don't think so. We got to rig. Um, I don't see anything else. If there was another question in the den, maybe uh, somebody, if you asked it, if you could just retype it, that would be great, just so I don't get off course. But I sort of am off course, so to speak. It's, a, it's like hitting a duck hook in the wrong spot. In any event, uh, let's go see if we can scramble and get the heck out of uh, Dodge. So we haven't taken a look at uh, gold. Do we need to take a look at gold? We probably need to take a look at gold, or we should take a look at gold. Uh, so what's the level we we're going to be watching for inside of Goldilocks today? Let's just look at a 30-minute time frame chart out here. Um, we can see that this had bottomed earlier this morning. As it was moving down, it was creating that nine count out here at about 5.30 this morning. Now, price ran right up into resistance. It actually closed just above it. It's always why well, you like to wait maybe for one bar as a confirmation when you break through resistance or support because you had that complete failure on a 30-minute basis as you came into that 10 o'clock time frame. Now, price is trading with inside the range, not providing us with a really great signal. The range to the upside is that high from 1345.40. A close above that would say higher price. Likewise, if we get a close below at this stage here, I'm going to go with this uh, low of about 13.36 and some change, then uh, you could have actually an A to B equals CD to the uh, downside that is unfolding inside of gold. Now that's just the 30 minute time frame. If we take a look at uh, Goldilocks on the daily time frame, just trading down a buck 90 right now, you know, is that a problem? Well, I don't know. You had that 100% move of a move. 100% uh, move of a move means you take a prior swing point. In the case of Goldilocks, that's February 20th. Price gets up there and rejects it. I don't have volume out here uh, that we're going to rely upon, but you did have price test and reject it. If it was on lighter volume, well, that's bad news. As you could always, you can't bust them up. You try to go bust them down. Well, where's bust them down? We'll just put a yellow line out there. You can see that very clearly out here, and that's in that 1274. So there's your trading range for Goldilocks. We go ahead and we put on the market profiles for Goldilocks. What is that going to tell both you and I? Well, let's take a look at the uh, daily and weekly uh, combined if I can find them. Ah, here we go. So if we take a look at the uh, daily, um, you can see the profiles running from the top of the box at 1345. So resistance price still below that to the bottom at 1323 out there. Um, so here's what we know about gold. Failed to break out the highs, came back, closed below resistance of the top of its daily profile, which it's trading at right now. And I would say I would then go to defer back to that 30-minute time frame to say if price closed below that support level, you're looking for a run down to 1323. So I got your attention. Somebody might say, well, what was that support level again, steve -O? Well, that support level, I would say, would be the prior swing point low, on a short-term basis, and that's going to look like 1336.60 out there would be the uh, number. So that's what I see when I take a look at Goldie. 
locks. What else do we want to uh, go look at out here? I don't know the answer. There's no uh, request inside the Tiger's Den. Kind of quiet out there. No other uh, requests inside the email alerts. And the phone lines are open. But let's go take a look at uh, things that are moving in the market, boys. Facebook. Facebook is moving. Trade out 187. Let's go take a look at uh, Facebook, get a feel for what it's doing in relationship to its TAS market profiles. It's above the daily, above the weekly, and it looks like it's trading up towards the monthly. Monthly time frame or resistance here, 199.50 out here. That would be your resistance area. Now, today is going to be day number seven of a potential TD setup nine count. That means that if there's a high that's going to form inside of Facebook, it's not going to be today that you'd be watching. It could be tomorrow. It could be Wednesday or it could be Thursday. So in the case of Facebook, it's the Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday level that you would be wanting to watch out here. But as we speak right now, everything looks hunky-dory. If you take a look at the volume inside the move today, you've got 16.9 million shares. Last time price was up here. Looks like it was with about uh, 12 million shares. So price moving higher, doing it with uh, some good volume. Actually, yeah, about 13 million shares. So everything is pretty good. At the high, the all-time, was it the all-time high? No, it couldn't have been the all-time high. No, it wasn't. The most recent high out there, even I knew that. But the most recent high, that 100% move of a move, so to speak, that's April 25th, 54 million shares there. Um, we'll watch how Facebook is trading. Its TD setup counts as well as it approaches that 192.12 level. That's the low of April 25th, and it looks to me like that is where FB, Facebook, is headed to. We go take a bite in the apple, see what that is doing, moving higher, uh, and that is trading with inside trading ranges established by its uh, TAS market profiles. If we take a look at the daily trading between 190.11, the bottom and the top is 196.79. You want to watch that top to see if price closes above that level. From a weekly standpoint, you're trading below the top at 209.16 and the bottom, 187 out here. Looks like real resistance is in that 197-ish range. You got 196.79 on the daily, 209 on the weekly, and 197.86. That is your resistance zone for ticker symbol. Double A, M C O. Actually, that's the ticker symbol for Double A P L for Apple. Dow's up 55, S and P seven. We'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors.
biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. back uh, folks so mr bill in our tigers den wants to take a look at uh, ticker symbol mu that's micron technology uh, he says there is unusual option activity uh, going into next month and uh, possibly from a long uh, call situation and i typed in now now what mr bill wanted to take a look at were the tas market profiles so we have those on the system now when we take a look at these tas market profiles how, this is how I'd like it to think of them. For those of you that like the game of football, I want you to think of those TAS market profiles as the uh, first down markers out here, the, as the chains, right? So assume you've got a first down, you know, you've got one marker, one chain where that ball is spotted, and then you've got 10 yards. So in trading and investing, we don't use yards or, you know, we, when we take a look at price out here, we take a look at where are those markers at? Those markers are not going to be leading indicator tools. They're going to tell us where price needs to get above to be breaking out and take out resistance to the upside, and then a new profile will eventually form, and well, as well as to the downside. If you uh, kind of like in the, you know, it tells you that your defense didn't hold uh, the bottom of the box out there. So that's why I want you to to use that. So 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 now we can use those in addition to other tools out here, but never a leading indicator as to when a top or a bottom has formed provides us with that information where buyers and sellers are lined up but that is really in a useful so useful i would not trade without them they're a great tool but they're not going to identify what mr bill's looking for maybe a bit of um, hey what's going on with regard to that uh, with that activity out there what is it that people are seeing maybe they're using steve's uh roads momentum indicator signal we can see that price has been stretching doing less relative energy uh was doing that uh, today um it doesn't look like we're going to get that earlier in the day and mr bill i was already looking at this as a potential uh, long trade for uh, client subscribers out there um, earlier in the day like around 11 30 noon it, we actually had a little bit of a we had a hammer candle that was out there uh, we don't have that right now and it looks like the body of this candle may be end up being twice more than twice the size of the uh, wick out there so now all we've got is stevie's red line if we got a bullish reversal candle if we had gotten a hammer today uh, then i would have uh, taken a, a trade inside of mu of micron out here because uh, that would have given me the necessary signal and i would have used that bill at the same time uh knowing that we had the uh, buyers at that 3255 level that were at least out there to try to defend the position now the bounce may only get up to the 3551 level the top of that daily profile again those are our first down or our yardage markers on both ends of the uh, spectrum out here uh, we don't have anything worthwhile in the daily i'm sorry the weekly or the monthly to hang our hat on so to speak what we do have on the weekly to hang our hat on and a reason to consider that trade as well is that price on a weekly basis has come back to support the breakout level that's that red horizontal line set up by that uh, uh that set up nine count out here and price has been testing that level since may this weekly time frame so the week of may 31st the following week then last week 
even this week out here. You get the possibility of a uh, setup nine count forming on a weekly basis. I'm more interested right now in taking a look at has price really come back to support? Because if I look at the daily time or the weekly time frame using our TAS profiles, Bill, I I'm not going to find that, am I? But you and I know that's not the only thing, right? When we take a look at uh, uh, markets, we want to use the, uh, the the tools that really help us to understand when price is pulling back to a breakout area. And on a weekly basis, what we just looked at says that Micron technology is. So with regard to those folks that are trying to reduce risk by uh, taking an options trade, I totally see it. I totally get it. Uh, I was looking at it from a stock trade position, uh, and for me, I just need to see a bullish reversal signal. So it may not be today. Maybe it's Wednesday. Maybe it's not at all out there. So I hope that helps you out with regard to that uh, trade out there. Um, the TAS Weekly is a, a new box. Yes, it is. It is a new box. It's bearish out there. Um, it is, it's not within the prior box, the bottom, the bottom and the center line, Bill, are both at 3342. Uh, so you only see two lines out there. Let me make it easier for him to see, for you at home to see, and we just simply turn off price. So now you can see the newest, the newest one that is out here. You only see a red line and a green line. If you look up in my box in the upper right-hand corner, you'll see the center, CTR, and bottom, BOT, both at 33.42. Now, that should be a strong, ordinarily we'd say that's a strong support area. But right now we have to say it's a strong resistance level, right, because price is trading below that. I say it's bearish only from the standpoint that this box formed below the prior box out there. So it's somewhat uh, bearish. If we take a, a look at volume, let's do this. Let's, as long as we're really investigating this. Earlier today when I was looking at it, the volume was light. So we were seeing a test of the swing point. Let me put that in here. Let's go take a look at the prior swing point inside of Micron. That was from the trading day of May 29th. That prior swing point had volume of 28 million. You're at 12.3 right now, 148. And uh, you've tested that. You got down to 32.14. So you're getting a rejection of a swing point on light volume as well as stretching to the downside. So, again, um, how, how would I take this? Bill, you were looking at this from an options standpoint, so that's how I think you should pursue this if, you're, if you want to, if you're going to, um, is to pursue it from that standpoint. Uh, from a longer-term holding, I'd really want to see that pattern complete. So I hope that helps you out with regard to Micron technology. Uh, I like the way that uh, you were thinking because, well, I was already thinking the same thing, but was waiting, as I said, for that bullish reversal signal. Okay, so um, uh, Russell 2000 equity futures contract, uh, by, uh, moving up just slightly out there, but um, you've one great mind, your great mind, mine's you know so so out here. Um, so we know our ranges, right? We can't, we know our ranges, that's which is cool, both daily and weekly because we had those horizontal trading ranges, just simply as well as those TD set up a range level. So we're range bound out here until, and I would, I would think, I, I believe that it's that two hour time frame chart that's going to be most valuable. Now, with regard to the NQ, though, I'm going to take that back, right? We were looking at Facebook, we're look, look, they're all to the upside, but the, the ones that have about a 40 or 50 percent weighting Microsoft Apple Amazon Google Facebook Cisco that represents right there I believe fit more than 50 percent they're all trading to the upside so in the NQ what you're going to want to be watching out here and we've talked about this level here for a while this is the resistance line this is that uh, uh, green horizontal line going across my screen if you see a close above 75 85 50 don't be short the NQ right now hey Price is up at resistance. I get it. I, 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 again, that that's a you know, it's, it, when you can't take out resistance, it kind of makes you want to say hmm, something to think about. However, price is above Stevie's red line at 74.28 out here. Uh, you're only in wave number A or one to this stage. Uh, so, the key level, and because you can see that it's been tested a couple times and it's failed inside the NQ, it's going to be 75.85.50. Now. The NQ ought to be able to, and if the NQ can do that, it'll lift all tides higher. It'll lift all those boats out there, uh, and they'll want to continue to run higher. In the ES Mini, that price point that it wants to run higher to is where it had broken down. That's 29, now is that the right number? 29.38.25. That is the uh, number out there inside of the NQ. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be back for our two-minute wrap.
Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Welcome back, uh, folks. Eddie writes in, let's take a look at a couple of instruments. The first one is WGO, otherwise known as Wagyu Beef. No, it's Winnebago out there. And uh, so here's what I see, Eddie. If we just take a look at what uh, it did on Friday, uh, price closed over the April 18th swing point. That had uh, 434,000 shares that traded. On Friday, it closed above that with 385. So 434 versus 385. It may be a false breakout. Uh, is what that would be signaling to us. Uh, today's volume 232, so it looks like it's still going to be light. That doesn't mean that the ABCD pattern can't take place. By the way, that A to B equals CD pattern out here would give you a uh, price projection in the uh, range of the 1 to 1 would be 4079 out here, 1 to 1 1.24318. But it doesn't have the conviction right behind that. I know you're looking for just a short-term trade out here. If I take a look at this daily time frame, we're going to see that Friday was day number nine of that TD setup or count number nine of that uh, bar number nine. And we haven't made a higher high today. We don't need to. So this says caution Will Robinson. So would I take the long trade right now? You're asking me which way may it go one way or the other. There's potential topping signals out here. You'd want to see some type of bearish reversal tomorrow on a price that gets you back below 36.93 out here. So that's what I see when I take a look at uh, Winnebago or Wagyu beef. WGO is a ticker symbol. The next, next one you want to take a look at is KMX. And KMX, that is CarMax out here. Uh, CarMax, let me add that to my other screens. See what we see out here. Price above the daily. Uh, 
price is above the weekly profile, price is above the monthly. So this looks uh, pretty darn toot and good. Now, price is moving higher, doing less relative energy out there. Um, so that's always a caution sign. Uh, but not until we see some type of bearish reversal signal. That is not the candlestick that we have today out here. So where is it that uh, this could head to? Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. But it looks more bullish than bearish as we speak. Folks, thanks for being here. Stay tuned. Our polar bear. Best polar bear in the entire world, David White. He's up next. Good to be back with you. I look forward to seeing you on Terrific Tuesday. Take care.